let's uh, give it a whirl. Near blueprint acquired. Be advised, the Cyclops is designed to be operated by a three-person crew. Only experienced Helms people should attempt to pilot this vehicle solo. There you go. Clearly, we don't have three people. G'day and welcome to another episode of uh, Subnautica. Thank you very much for uh, the comments in the in the past episodes. Um, if you uh, don't forget to hit the the like and the subscribe, it definitely helps us out a a lot. And leave your comments below, as it uh, will give us some um, direction and what other things you need for this uh, sort of series of of Subnautica as we come into launch. All right. So in this episode, we are going to make. Our Cyclops. So you're about mid-game. Um, you've done a lot of your missions. Um, you've probably finished up in about Life Pod Four, uh, and now you're you're chewing at the bit to actually get your uh, your Cyclops. So first of all, how do you get your Cyclops parts? So there's actually three components as part of your Cyclops. It's the Cyclops hull, uh, the Cyclops bridge, and the Cyclops engine. And each of these parts uh, obviously can be found randomly, certainly in the map. But um, there are some specific areas that I have. Um, found the components and this is where I got my blueprints from. Now for Cyclops engine parts I'd be looking around the alien island so I find just around these areas obviously I've collected mine but around these areas and on the other side around here where the uh, Leviathan is um, is where I would find or I would look for Cyclops engine parts okay so for Cyclops hull parts I'd suggest so you've got life pod 4 and you've got the front of the aura where you've actually explored and you've entered the aura I find probably the best place for Cyclops hull parts is around here and the base of this uh, mountain I guess that the aura is sitting on in the shallows so remembering you've got a, a Leviathan around here as well but searching around here and remembering I've collected all my parts so uh, I don't think they respawn but this is certainly where I got my blueprints for my Cyclops hole. So if we find some more before we bump into the Leviathan, there it is. So we'll keep our distance there, being at 75%. The other part that sometimes you find some blueprints, even though it gets a little bit shaky, it's just actually underneath the ore itself. So just have a look around here. This is where I found the um, the hull blueprints. All right, and then the final piece is the Cyclops bridge uh, blueprints. So I would recommend that if you're looking for the Cyclops bridge blueprints, is to look around Life Pod 13. Um, this is certainly where I picked up my blueprints. Um, I either circumnavigated the the large tree, um, but then I just made my way through the uh, the mushroom biome, and a majority, well, I'd say all the blueprints in order to find my um, my bridge was actually found in here so just have a look around as I said circumnavigate the large mushroom tree um, once again I have ouch um, I have collected my blueprints um, 
but that's not to say there's not a few more sort of lying around. But anyway, so here we are. So just, uh, they're the three locations that I would recommend getting your blueprints. All right, now that we've got our blueprints, um, let's have a look at what we actually need. So we need three plastisteel ingots. Okay, and plastisteel ingots are, are using 10 titanium to make a titanium ingot. Um, and then to lithium. Remembering the best place for lithium is the alien island. Um, the next one is enamel glass. And enamel glass is glass with stalker teeth. Now, if you haven't, I assume you may have already got your, your enamel glass, but probably two ways. The easiest way to find stalker teeth is you can make a stalker farm um, where you're actually dropping a heap of um, a salvage in one location. And what happens is the stalkers pick up and drop that salvage, pick up and drop that salvage, and then they'll slowly drop their teeth. So that's a way to sort of um, to, to farm stalker teeth. The other one is literally go to your scanner room, um, and within your scanner room, it now has a component for stalker teeth. So that's another one that will definitely help you out uh, as well. Um, remembering that they're obviously Obviously, your scanner room is continually being uh, upgraded, so you can always look for things uh, within your scanner room. So that makes things a lot easier uh, as well. Um, the last uh, couple of components that we have for our Cyclops, lubricant, which is easy, advanced wiring kit, um, and lead. All right, let's make our Cyclops. Probably the other thing that's a, a given as well, you make your Cyclops through your mobile vehicle bay. Um, like always, I'm doing this filming and it's night, but I will say that obviously at night time it does make my little farm here quite good. So we've got our gel sack farm um, and now we're starting to grow our, uh, our blood vines, which is definitely going to come handy later on in the game when we need those components. Alright, welcome back, and now as the sun is rising, isn't that just a great view, like loving this game, like just the colours and the brightness, but anyway, let's make our, um, our Cyclops. So what we need to do is grab our mobile vehicle bay. Make sure, because with the Cyclops you need a little bit of depth. So make sure you've got a little bit of depth, which we have here. Jump ourselves on top of the Cyclops, much like when you made your Seamoth. Okay, so you've got your components, you've got the vehicles, which is your Seamoth, your Cyclops and your Prawn. And we'll do the Prawn in another uh, episode, now that we've got our Aerogel. And we've also got our Natune Escape Rocket. Uh, for getting off the island, uh, which obviously we made, uh, we collected from the, the captain's quarters. But there we go. Let's uh, give it a whirl. Near blueprint acquired. Be advised, the Cyclops is designed to be operated by a three person crew. Only experienced helms people should attempt to pilot this vehicle solo. There you go. Clearly, we don't have three people. And there you go. And what you would have also noticed is by making it, we also um, got a blueprint out of it, was the Cyclops uh, decoy tube upgrade. Um, so let's jump inside. Beautiful is that. So obviously to start off with it's actually letting you know how you can get inside. It will open it up. Click in. Welcome aboard, Captain. All, All right. systems online. So this is the lower deck. Uh, lower deck contains uh, storage. Um, empty storage. Uh, and in this case here you cannot label this storage. Um, but it's also sunk into the, the ship. You've got a component here and this is where you can actually put your pawn or your cyclops coming in through the bottom and then you've got a back area uh, heading up to the engine bay from from the back so that's basically the lower deck 
plenty of room down here to put more storage containers if you want, if you're going to go farming. Climbing up here we have our bridge. So just from right to left, the first thing we've got is our lights. So we can actually turn the external lights off. Um, internal lights, which actually makes it quite dark. Um, time to uh, rechange. So you can actually changing your your ship, your colours, name in black. There you go. I think that's done. And if we jump outside, we'll definitely be able to see that. Um, this one will tell you the condition of your cyclops and obviously how much uh, health you've got. And where there's damage, you'll actually see that spots will actually come on your Cyclops, um, denoting where the damage points are, because you will need to jump outside uh, to actually repair. Now, this is your helm, and I'll come back to the helm a little bit later on um, as we move through. So we've got an area here, um, and I would definitely recommend then now grabbing your, your Habitat Builder. Um, I don't have any uh, titanium on me. Um, and actually using this area. Normally I drop a couple of um, uh, uh, planter boxes and this is where I'd actually grow my food. This is um, your vehicle docking point and we can we'll drop out, drop our uh, seam off with this area here and we will set this up and I'll come back to a fully fitted out uh, Cyclops. Um, I would recommend using this area um, Definitely to sort of set up where you would have some more containers, your fabricator um, and that. Now we've got two areas into the um, into your engine room, um, but we've also got our decoy launcher. Now at default, you get a single decoy missile or a single decoy um, rocket. Uh, probably chosen the wrong words for both of those. With the upgrade that we got before, um, it allows the capacity to actually go to three, uh, I think, which is, does come in handy if you're actually being attacked and you need to launch a decoy. So let's go down the left-hand side. Um, it automatically comes with uh, lith uh, lithium uh, power um, and you have a fabricator so to upgrade your Cyclops. So you've got the Cyclops depth module to get your, your greater depth, um, energy efficiency, so you um, you don't actually use the power, but we don't have our, uh, our poly -alien, alien, uh yet, uh, so we'll need to get that. Uh, shield generator. Um, shield generator is good, but it consumes a lot of power, so you need to be careful. Um, the sonar upgrade. Um, docking repair module, which is good, which means that every time your prawn or your Seamoth docks, um, it will actually repair the unit, uh, fire suppression, um, and obviously your Cyclops decoy tube upgrade, which is what you come, what you received. Now, if you go to the other side of the engine bay, not only have you got another three more power sources, six in total, you have six upgrades. Um, remember, you need depth modules and energy efficiency. Um, so depth modules, you'll probably have two depth modules to take it down to the third depth, one energy efficiency, so you've got three slots for what you want to choose to put in there. Um, last part that we'll have with the Cyclops. So just literally coming up, the pilot, the actual sub itself, you've got your sonar in the right hand side, and on the left hand side, as soon as you arc it up, this is how you actually turn it on. Engine powering up. So you've got three levels of power. We're just, going, we're just going to go on the slowest. The right hand side, you've got your lights. Your correction. You've got your cameras. You've got silent running, um, which is also good if you're being attacked, but it does use power. And you've got your decoy. You've got your sonar for when you've got rocks and components around you. And then you've got your health, and this is actually your noise um, to actually show how much noise you're actually making. Obviously, the more noise you make, the more creatures you attract. Up the top, you've got the current depth. 
and you've got the current power that you've got with your um, uh, compass in front of you. So going back here, you've got your cameras. So we'll drop onto the cameras now. So you literally have your kill, and you can rotate 360. Um, so you have your kill, um, rotating your mouse if you're doing it from your mouse, and you can see the red now from my Mac. You now have the one for the, the coning tower or the on top. And then the last one we have is right at the back of the screw. So that one I don't use too much unless I'm reversing. Um, but I do use this one and I do use this one a lot um, when we're going into, into depth. Press escape to get out of it and um, literally drive it the same as your seam off. Um, clearly the difference is the, uh, the speed and how to move things around. So let's just park it over by our base over here, watching out for the um, rig. We're just going to go here. You can press C, C to actually drop down. Obviously use your cameras to make sure you're not going to hit the ground. You can still go forward. And that's how I normally steer the Cyclops, or how I'm recommending it, is just by you switching between the cameras. Um, as you're navigating between three. So it's quite slow, it's quite cumbersome. Um, so it does take a little bit of while to get used to it. Switch it off. Engine powering down. Jump off, and now we'll just board our seam off. Now to um, uh, to board it, it's, it's very similar to when you get in yourself. So you go underneath and you'll find that the doors will acknowledge you and open. So as you move in, then it will take you. And move you into the Cyclops. So the good thing about, uh, you now you can close the door if you want to actually move over. Having the um, this part here, it allows you to change your batteries. Um, so then you'll have the and your upgraded modules. Um, plus, you can access your storage. Okay, so that's an excellent way of actually accessing your storage while it's inside your Cyclops itself. Um, let's just quickly have a look at it, um, how I fitted out my Cyclops. And once again, this is just how I'm doing it. Um, but um, you can certainly look at uh, uh, obviously fitting out the way that uh, best suits you and the, and the missions you're actually doing. All right, so uh, here we are in a Cyclops that's been fitted out. So um, I would definitely say put a, um, a planter box in there. Whoops. Um, because it just means you do have unlimited food and water in there. This one probably isn't as necessary, the aquarium, but if you do find any strange fish and you want to collect them, um, the aquarium is also good as well. Um, I've certainly used this area to put up a heap of storage, um, making sure, and I've got a fabricator. Now, I do not have a battery recharger, um, and it is something you can consider, but remembering that when you have these components, you're going to drain more power. So I have upgraded my decoy launcher to five, um, and obviously I've got the uh, the batteries in here um, going through. So there you go. There's just a recommendation for your uh, your setup and and how you would set up your your cyclops. Um, I hope you enjoyed the uh, the video on uh, where to find the the cyclops parts and just the sort of the basics of the uh, the cyclops itself. Um, thank you very much. Don't forget to hit the likes. It really helps. And if you enjoyed this and you'd like other uh, episodes, um, uh, feel free to hit the subscribe too. Love to sort of have you on, on board. Uh, thank you very much and look forward to seeing you in the next episode of um, uh, Subnautica. Um, yes, this is the lava cave, um, but we're not going to show you it in this video, but we will show it in further videos. Thank you very much. 
Um, take care and see you in the next video. Bye.